Video games are no stranger to controversy. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that video games and controversy go together like Tony Soprano and a big ol' cigar. Pretty much ever since video games started to look better than the original Mario Brothers, somebody somewhere was off getting mad at them. Whether it's controversy over 2D sprites ripping out each other's spines, or Lara Croft's boobies being way too big, video games have for some reason always had a tendency to make people very angry. Even games that on their surface seem pretty inoffensive sometimes get wrapped up in a whirlwind of undeserved bad press. No game is a better example of that than Gary's Mod. There's honestly nothing about Gary's Mod that a level-headed person would have a problem with. It might have firm roots in the edgier parts of the internet, and it's definitely not the most family-friendly game out there, but at the end of the day, the crudest thing that you can do on a fresh installation of Gmod usually involves a fizz gun and the Alex Vance ragdoll. But obviously, that isn't where most Gmod controversies come from. The largest and most frequent exporter of drama and anger has to be the Gary's Mod Workshop. Allegations of abuse, racism, doxing, and just about any nefarious online activity you can think of have all been attributed to the Gmod Workshop, its add-ons, and its creators. Which makes sense. If you give a bunch of Gary's Mod players a functionally unmoderated platform to upload basically whatever they damn well please, there's no doubt that some controversy is going to arise sooner or later. But there's one specific Gmod add-on that stands tall above the rest when it comes to getting people angry. An add-on that, for many reasons, is probably the most controversial Gary's Mod add-on that has ever existed. Today, we're going to discuss that. Civilly and respectfully. Like handsome gentlemen. Realism. It's something that a countless number of games strive for, and it's never been more popular than it is now. Realistic graphics, tactical gameplay, overcomplicated reload animations. While it's pretty mainstream nowadays and more or less every first-person shooter on the market has elements of tactical realism, it's pretty easy to forget that Gary's Mod was one of the largest and most influential central hubs for this style of FPS. Since the beginning of Gmod's long history, people have pretty much always been searching for a better, more realistic replacement for the default Half-Life 2 weapons included with the game. M9K Weapons, one of the most popular weapon add-ons in Gmod's history, is well over a decade old at this point. But that long history of realistic weapons in Gmod doesn't even come close to the popularity of the Gmod realism movement that started to gain popularity in 2019. Add-ons on top of add-ons were being created, and players took to modding their games so much that it barely even looked like Gmod anymore. People started to trade in their epic Source Engine B-Hops for grounded movement, tactical leans, body camera style gameplay, and of course, parkour. The Gmod community has been trying to get parkour right for years, even before the rise of Gmod realism. A countless number of add-ons have come and gone pretty much ever since the game was created that attempted to add parkour style movement to Gary's mod. But uh, given that this is a Source Engine game and parkour is pretty antithetical to how Source movement works, they've all been pretty lackluster. Many add-on creators tried and many add-on creators failed to implement parkour into Gmod in an actual intuitive and desirable way. That was until the Beat Run add-on came onto the scene somewhere around 2021. Beat Run is an add-on that once again attempts to bring parkour mechanics from other first-person games into Gary's Mod. The major difference between Beat Run and other add-ons that have tried in the past though is that Beat Run is actually good. It borrows heavily from the Mirror's Edge parkour system, which some consider to be the best implementation of parkour in a video game ever, and it combines it with the unparalleled freedom of movement that the Source engine is so famous for. So uh, what on earth could be controversial about it? It sounds like a good, well-made add-on, and it's a niche that the Gmod community has been looking to fill for well over a decade now. Well, like any online controversy, it involves taking the internet a little too seriously. Meet Dady, a Gary's Mod add-on creator that is responsible for some of the most popular Gmod add-ons of the last decade. While you might not be familiar with the name, you've probably seen or played his work before. There's LiDAR, which is a horror-adjacent Gmod add-on that saw a huge amount of popularity last year, and then there's Vmanip, which is an entire animation library that's basically the backbone of the entire Gmod realism community. Between these established, super popular add-ons and the more recent beat run, it wouldn't be too much of a bold statement to say that Dady carries the entire realism community on his back. Basically, if you've ever seen gameplay of Gary's mod that looks more like Battlefield than it does Gmod, it was probably at least in some part thanks to Dady. And while Dady has a long history of successful and well-received add-ons, I don't know if anything compares to the amount of positive reception he received when he first unveiled Beat Run. To put it plainly, people went nuts for Beat Run. Short clips on YouTube showing gameplay of the mod before release garnered views in the millions, and people were practically begging for Dady to release the add-on as soon as humanly possible. So like any smart person would do when thousands of people are begging for something you made, Dady decided to charge for Beat Run, which meant that it couldn't just go up on the Steam Workshop. 
A small one-time payment of $10.50 to Dady's Patreon page gets you lifetime access to Beat Run, which, in comparison to how much it changes Gary's mod and how good the add-on is, isn't really asking for all that much. But despite the relatively low price tag and free demo available for users to play with, people still took to trying to crack the add-on in an effort to get it for free. Pirated versions of Beat Run were being both made and distributed among some of the grimier members of Gmod's player base. One of the largest consumers and producers of Dady's pirated content were Eastern Europeans, more specifically, Russians. Armed with a language barrier and the knowledge that there was pretty much zero chance that Russia would ever enforce a DMCA claim for a Gary's Mod add-on, Dady decided that the best way to get pirates to stop would be just by asking them. Talking with the person who was doing the actual cracking, Dady politely requested that they stop distributing the add-on and stop informing users on how to get around its DRM. The pirate replied back and revealed that the only reason that he was cracking the add-on in the first place was because Patreon wasn't even available in Russia. Hearing this and likely feeling somewhat sympathetic for the guy, Dady offered to just give him a lifetime license to use Beat Run since he couldn't buy it himself. The pirate accepted, the two likely reconciled, and they then parted ways with a seemingly mutually agreed upon caveat that the piracy was going to stop. Now, that should be where the story ends, but you gotta keep in mind that this is Gary's mod, and most people who play this game have the IQ of a wooden spoon. Not even one day later, the Russian pirate wrote back, calling Dady a N-word lover. Putin uses the N-word, I call it the N-word. And then continued to distribute the crack for the add-on anyways. Now, what even is the appropriate course of action in response to something like this happening to you? I gotta be honest, I have no idea. But I know it probably isn't what Dady was about to do. In an effort to nip any attempts at piracy in the bud, Dady took the nuclear approach and, in one felt swoop, banned the entirety of Eastern Europe from using the add-on. If you had Krillic in your name or an Eastern European country on your Steam profile, you were gone. You simply weren't allowed to play Beat Run anymore. Now, the initial reaction to this move was, as you can imagine, anger. Gmod players, Russian and otherwise, were seething at Dady. Most people saw the move as ignorant and harmful to his own add-on, while many, including Dady, maintained that the move just made sense. After all, it is true that the majority of people trying to pirate the add-on were from Eastern Europe, and at the end of the day, it was a move that would only bring more attention to Beat Run. Attention that, while I'm sure was helpful for the add-on's popularity, was also very negative. People genuinely couldn't believe what Dady had done in response to piracy, and people were calling him everything from a control freak to a xenophobe. People were angry at Beat Run, and honestly, at this point, it was already one of the largest controversies that Gmod had ever seen. So most people who are Dady in this situation would likely just put their head down and lie low until it all blows over. But again, this is Gmod we're talking about, and you, you know that's not what happened. In a move that seems completely deranged, Dady decided that the best way to stomp out rampant Russian piracy was to release the add-on for free. Kind of. Dady infiltrated Eastern European Gmod communities, which is probably the closest thing that the internet has to the hood. But instead of being the FBI and distributing crack, Dady was distributing compromised builds of Beat Run. There were builds of the game that seemingly looked like a free, full version of Beat Run, but were backdoored by Dady to do something awfully sinister. Upon using the Honeypot add-on, it, unbeknownst to the user, logged your IP, your country of origin, and your Steam ID. Which is all pretty bad on its own, right? Uh, you don't want some random Gmod add-on creator having all of your personal info because you have no idea what he might do with it. He might even do something nefarious. Something like, oh, I don't know a leaderboard on his website that displays the IP and Steam ID of every single person who was dumb enough to try and pirate Beat Run. Countless people's IPs, home countries, and Steam IDs were on display very publicly on Dady's website for anyone to go look at, and to this day, they're still there. As you can imagine, the controversy surrounding Dady and Beat Run had now grown tenfold. He had shown the community that not only was he not going to back down from his original decision, but that he would take it even further. By this point, people were not only beginning to question Dady's sanity, but also if the add-on was even safe for paid users to have on their PCs. People called him all sorts of things. A control freak, a troll, a doxer. But at the end of the day, it seems like his insane campaign against the entirety of Eastern Europe somehow paid off. Information about how to pirate beat run pretty much doesn't exist anymore, and I think most people would rather just pay the $10 than end up on some website with all of their information out in the open. Sure, there might be a small percentage of people who still don't trust Dady's beat run add-on after this whole fiasco, but in my personal opinion, I don't think there's anything to worry about. I mean, you definitely shouldn't go around harvesting people's IPs and posting them publicly on a giant form, but it's also important to remember that an IP address is just an IP address. Every website you visit logs your IP, and if someone wants to get it from you, they probably will. The story of Beat Run and Dady is a weird one, 
On one hand, stealing money from a small add-on creator is probably pretty unjustifiably wrong, especially when it's a one-time purchase of only 10 bones. But on the other, dragging your own add-on to the mud to make a point probably isn't such a good idea. Contrary to what Reddit might say and the rest of the Gmod community, I don't necessarily think Deity is a malicious hacker or someone who's genuinely trying to cause any type of damage to people's well-being. I think he's just like a sort of vigilante type guy, like Batman. You guys like Batman, don't you? Listen, maybe it was wrong to put those people's IP on a big wall of shame just because they couldn't afford the add-on. And maybe it was wrong to ban an entire region of the world from playing the add-on, but the real question is, was it funny? I mean, it was, it was a little funny, I'm not gonna lie to you. Beat Run is easily one of the most successful standalone Gary's Mod add-ons ever. Never before has an add-on garnered so much attention, had such a dedicated community, and been so well organized. But it also might just be one of the most successful trolling efforts ever orchestrated in Gary's Mod's history. While it's definitely a moral gray area, and there will no doubt be a debate in the comments about whether Deity was in the wrong or not, the fact of the matter is a random Gmod add-on creator was able to do something that a AAA developer would never, ever be able to do. And that's effectively stop piracy. It's just like Gabe Newell said. The easiest way to stop piracy is by 190-138-63185. Thanks for watching this silly ass video about Gary's mod or whatever. Uh, I've been Rat Lobber. Peace.